Hello viewers, welcome to Nagaland TV News Now. This is Johanna Muri. Let's start with the headlines at DR. Amid the escalating Ukraine crisis, India once again expresses its concern over the deteriorating situation in Ukraine and reiterates its call for immediate cessation of violence and end to hostilities. Amid the escalating Ukraine crisis, India once again expresses its concern over the deteriorating situation in Ukraine and reiterates its call for immediate cessation of violence and end to hostilities. Nagaland State Legal Service Authority set to conduct the first quarterly national Lok Adalat sitting in all district headquarters on March 12. The first quarterly Lok Adalat will be held in the year 2022-23. Minister for Health and Family Welfare as Pang Yu Pom inaugurates 50 bedded COVID-19 hospital at District Hospital in Dimapur. Pang Yu Pom says that the hospital will be one of the most required and needed facilities to cater people's needs. Venuzo Daho retains the title of 28 Nagaland Wrestling Championship 2022. Defeats opponent Manusale Naga in the final held at the Kucholizeg local ground Kohima. Now the news in details. As the Ukraine invasion of U Ukraine enters day six of the war, scenario is expressing many major developments. In a development, it seems Moscow is preparing to launch a new military push imminently. A huge Russian military convoy stretching some 40 miles was spotted by a U.S. satellite imaging company just the north of Ukraine capital Kyiv, which has already repulsed several assaults. Satellite photos provided by Marak's a U.S. company showed that the convoy, which had been missing since Sunday, had mushroomed more than 40 miles military vehicles. According to photos, apparently the convoy covered the entire stretch of road from near Antono Airport, some 80 miles away from the capital town of Perisk, a distance approximately 40 miles. A number of homes and buildings are being seen burned and north and northeastern of Ivan Kiev, near the roads where the convoy is traveling satellites and has also captured images of additional ground forces deployment and a ground attack helicopter unit in southern Belarus. Less than 20 miles north of the border with Ukraine, Kiev's outgutted but determined troops slow down Russia's advance and held into the capital and other key cities at least time begins. As talks between the Ukraine and Russian delegates wrapped up near the Belarusian border, several blasts could be heard in Kyiv itself. Russian troops have been advanced slowly in this capital city, nearly 3 million people. Amid the escalating Ukraine crisis, India once again expresses its concern over the deteriorating situation in Ukraine and reiterated its call for immediate cessation of violence and end to hostilities. India said that this was a deeply concerning saying all differences can be bridged through honest sincere and sustained dialogue. These comments came during a rare emergency special sessions of the UN General Assembly on Ukraine. India's permanent representative to the UN Ambassador, T.S. Tirumurti, also thanked all neighboring countries of Ukraine who have opened their borders for Indian citizens and given all facilities to Indian missionaries and their personnel to evacuate Indian nationals to their hometown. He further stated that the Delhi is going to whatever it can to undertake immediate and urgent evacuation process and efforts of Indian nationalists still stranded in Ukraine. Noting that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has advocated this strongly in the recent conversation with leadership of the Russian Federation and Ukraine, Triam said that there was an urgent pressing humanitarian situation during development in Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths and UN High Commissioner Filippo Grandi for their briefing. India remains deeply concerned at the unfolding developments in Ukraine, where the situation continues to deteriorate. Our considered call for immediate cessation of violence and an end to all hostilities is an urgent imperative. India's Prime Minister has advocated this strongly 
in his recent conversations with the leadership of the Russian Federation and Ukraine. We welcome the commencement of direct talks. We reiterate our conviction that differences can only be bridged through sustained dialogue and diplomacy. We also underline that all members have agreed on the principles, the UN Charter, international law, and on the respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. There is an urgent and pressing humanitarian situation developing in Ukraine. In such times of conflict, India attaches the highest pri priority to the safety and well-being of civilians, in particular women, children, and the elderly. We are of the view that core principles of humanitarian assistance should be fully honored. Taking into account the humanitarian requirements in Ukraine, my government has also decided to provide urgent relief supplies, including medicines, and these are being dispatched tomorrow. We remain deeply concerned for the safety and security of thousands of Indian citizens, including students, stranded in Ukraine. Our evacuation efforts have been adversely impacted by the developments on the ground at the border crossings. Given that the safety of Indian nationals is of paramount importance to my government, senior ministers from the government of India are being deployed as special envoys to Ukraine's neighboring countries. We thank them for their cooperation at this difficult time. We stand ready to help those from our neighbors and developing countries who are also stranded in Ukraine and may seek assistance. We also support all UN humanitarian efforts. As reiterated yesterday, there is no other option but to return to the path of diplomacy and dialogue as the only way ahead. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths and UN High Commissioner. The ninth flight carrying 200 and Indian stranded Indian nationalists departed from the Romanian capital, Bucharest, from New Delhi on Thursday under Operation Ganga reached India an hour ago. Earlier, taking down to Twitter, External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar said, We will not rest till our fellow Indians are saved. Nine Operation Ganga flight departed Bucharest from New Delhi with 218 Indian nationalists. The Nagaland State Legal Services Authority under the aegis of the National Legal Services Authority will be conducting the first quarterly National Lok Adalat People's Court sitting in all districts headquarters on March 12, which will be the first quarterly National Lok Adalat to be held in the year 2022 and 23. A total of 11 Lok Adalat benches at district court premises will be set up by the District Legal Service Authority. Notably, Lok Adalat is one of the alternative dispute redress mechanism and a forum where cases pending on the court law or at the pre-legitation stage are settled or compromised speedily and amicably. Persons having dispute cases, pre-legitation and pending on civil matrimonial pact and petty offences cases can go forward on the day or submit their disputes before the date and DLSA front officers, district court building, NSLSA member secretary office, DC office compound or contact 0370 or email it and nslsa nagaland at the rate furthermore the disposal data of each dslas will be further uploaded on the web portal or the site authority A 50 bedded COVID-19 hospital was inaugurated at District Hospital Dimapur on Monday by the Minister for Health and Family Welfare, S. Pang Yupom. Speaking on the occasion, S. Pang Yupom said that the hospital is one of the most required and needed facilities to cater the people's needs with all the advanced equipments in place which will enable timely care and proper treatment. He further mentioned that the three district hospitals' buildings will be coming up in the due course at a time at Zunoboto, Noklak and Longlang District. 
outbreak. Notably, the extension of the hospital was developed with support from the Novo Nordisk Foundation Embassy of Denmark in New Delhi, CC Camp Bengaluru and Invest India through AGNLI mission under the guidance of the Office of the Principal Scientific Advisor of the Government of India. District Administration Bandari and Block Task Force of Bandari in ages of Beti Bachao Beti Parao organized a one-day literary program on Monday. The program was held at the Governor Higher Secondary School Bandari under the theme Save the Girl Child, Educate the Girl Child. Notably, competitions on three categories such as an essay, extempore speech and slogans were held for the girls' students. While the winners were awarded certificates and cash prize and were also designated as agents and ambassadors to create awareness about the BBBP amongst the students' community at the local level. Deputy Chief Minister, Minister of Home, Y. Patton flagged off the newly purchased vehicles for district SPS during a function held at police headquarters on Monday. Notably, 11 new Mahindra Scorpios are given to the district SPS. Furthermore, the flagging of ceremony, Y. Patton stated that the remaining newly upgraded district's procurement is under process. NLTV on Tuesday took a ground report on the initiative taken by Aosanan Tonglom Jem Dimapur ASTD for further beautification and safeguard of the old Naga Cemetery at Lakeview Colony Dimapur, which took almost one month for the renovation. The cemetery was measured about 18 because and was closed by the Naga Council on December 2022 since there was no space of land area for burial. For the same, they constructed a new cemetery in Zani village area Dimapur, which measured 16 because and is three kilometers away from Zion Hospital. NCD President Mr. E. Kikon said that he is extremely happy that ASTD took officials took up such initiative for the people. On the other hand, Mr. Meren Nokpu wished that the old cemetery will serve as a tourist spot in the near future. 75th uh, Platinum Jubilee. <coughs> Naka Council, Naka 2024, they are here, see? It over our can be since we are part and parcel of the Naga Council. Amagan be Naga Council game mudot koralaga isabti. Ito huli bi kuri di bunigi koi kini koralaga ase. We are very thankful to all walks of people that they are very much cooperating and coming forward. It over we are looking forward that before the onset of Naga Council Platinum Jubilee, the project can be completed. Thank you. To abuni laga speech this sir abuni koi she ke in the near coming days, our sons to long jam dima popara ido all naka symmetry to tourist spot ni shine ekta kuri bolla vision de kuri ase to challenges to ki thagi bo aro abuni la message naka manokan ki kia se ido lao por yes ido symmetry laga hobra iman explanation di bolli bi tana se kindo amagan kuri bolli monda ka do since the naka council has already opened the new cemetery. Amigan do emo yo leki bo. Do emo yo do da da a lot detail leki ga na because for the this maintenance is not for only few years. It will go in the long run. So we will have a emo yo with our legal consultants. Now here one besides this uh, maintenance, as we discussed that. No structure will be disturbed nor destroyed unless with the concern of the families. Whatever it is required for this uh, bar, removing of bar and all, the owner will come and identify it. Then with the concern of this, they will remove it. But even such cases also, when they are doing for some uh, structure, unavoidable cases will come up. So I request all these uh, families to come and forward and just identify. 
The assessment for cleanest ULB ward to commence from March 1 to 31 in Futuro following the intensive cleaning drive which was held at Futuro Town on November 26, February 2022. Some of the following criteria which will be looked as upon as notified by the Department of Urban Development Government of Nagaland, ADC and Administrator Futuro Subdivision are all wards to be garbage free and plastic free, all drained streets in respective wards to be cleaned, house compounds and surroundings to be cleaned, traders to clean the respective vicinity, innovative practices in waste management to be checked. Government department directed to conduct cleanliness drive in office premises. Furthermore, the notification also directed that all the government departments to conduct cleanliness drive in the respective office premises. The 28th Nagaland Wrestling Championship 2022's finale was held on Monday at Kucheje Local Ground Kohima, whereby champion Venuzo Daho retained the championship title after defeating his opponent Paseluse Naga in the finals. Venuzo, who represented the Chakasang Wrestling Association, won a crash prize of 3,20,000 and also won the late Vilahu Puro Memorial Award of 30,000 along with a championship belt and a trophy. On the other hand, Nagi, who represented the Angami Wrestling Association received 2,20,000 and runners-up. Furthermore, the second under-16 wrestling championship, Trifatal Himenshi, emerged as the winner and won 60,000, while Kuvetso Kezo as the runner-up awarded 40,000 along with certificates respectively. Notably, a total of 54 wrestling senior category participated in the championship title, representing three units Angami Wrestling Association, Chakasang Wrestling Association, and Ziliang Wrestling Association under NWA, while in the second under-16 category, 24 wrestlers participated, 18 wrestlers from each unit in the senior category, and 8 wrestlers each in the under-16 category. To be a wrestler, you don't need big infrastructure. And you know that to be a sports person, you need dedication, discipline, and build up your strength and stamina. And you have to know the technique of the sports. And therefore, I hope this challenge you will take upon yourself and promote wrestling in our state because this is the biggest game among the Nagas. For this, government have already decided in consultation with the Naga Wrestling Association we had several round of meetings and we say government will partner with the Naga Wrestling Association to build an international standard indoor stadium for which we had already acquired more than 13 acres of land and the seating capacity will be anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000 and this government will give you the land and the association has to take loan which the state government will be a guarantor and the professional will come and build an indoor stadium the model of Somo Wrestling uh, Indoor Stadium that will be not only for the wrestling associate uh, wrestling championship but it can host all kind of indoor sports including any events which can accommodate huge crowd and therefore government is with you with the associations and with the sports personnel. Today, Nagaland is known for Naga Wrestling 
championship. And though I can see some empty seat now, by noon and afternoon, there will be even no space for standing. I will take a break during lunch, but I hope to come back and watch in the evening to see the championship. So my best wishes to the wrestlers. Show your technique. Be proud that you are the ambassadors of our Naga people playing indigenous games. And therefore, your discipline, your style, your art of wrestling. District Development Coordination and Monitoring Committee on Monday held a meeting at WOCA to review the status and implementations of various central sponsored schemes in district. The meeting was chaired by the Member of Parliament and Disha Chairman Tokeho Jimomi meeting, while MLA and Advisor of Department of Horticulture and Border Affairs Mahatang Yantan also attended the meeting. An inter-school science exhibition competition in view of National Science Day under the team Integrated Approach in Science and Technology for Sustainable Future was held on Monday at the VDB Hall of Longleng. The exhibition was held in a commemoration of remarkable work of Indian physics C.V. Raman in the field of light scattering. Notably, the program was conducted by the District Administration and Mahila Shakri Kendra Longleng during the science exhibition. Some of the subject models presented by the students were sewage treatment, plant, soil erosion, assembling and working of robotics, wine turbine. Meanwhile, the first position was backed by the Christian High School, the second was backed by Pom Ponglem School and the third position was Shangshong Mission School. Winners were awarded certificates, cash prizes. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday extended wishes to all occasions of the Mahashrivastri. Modi took down to Twitter and said that God of Gods Mahadev would bless everyone. Notably, on this auspicious day, followers and devotees of Lord Shiva observe fast and perform special puja in several temples. Devotees offer milk to Shiv Lanka and praise for moksha. Meanwhile, Mahashrivastra is observed in several states of India like Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Himachal. British and Bihar. The prices of 19 kg commercial LPG cylinders have been increased by rupees 105 in Delhi from March 1. The price of 5 kg cylinder has also been increased by rupees 27. With this increase, 19 kg commercial cylinders will now cost rupees 2,012 rupees, while 5 kg cylinders will now cost rupees 569 in Delhi. However, there is no increase in domestic LPG cylinders. Notably, national oil marketing companies had slashed out the price of 19 kg commercial LPG cylinder cost by rupees 91.50 on February 1. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Monday announced a ban on Russian oil imports, saying oil revenues have helped to prop U.S. President Vladimir Putin and Russian oligarchs and wage war against Ukraine. Notably, Trudeau made the announcement at a press conference in Ottawa, where he also announced plans to provide anti-tank weapon system to Ukraine. Notably, Canadian hasn't imported any crude oil from Russia since 2019.
World Taekwondo has strongly condemned the brutal attacks on innocent lives in Ukraine, which go against the body's vision of peace is more than precious than triumph, and the World Taekwondo values of respect and tolerance. In this regard, World Taekwondo has decided to withdraw the honorary 9th Dan Black Belt conferred to Vladimir Putin in November 2013 in solidarity with the International Olympic Committee. No Russian nor Belarusian national flags or anthems will be displayed or played at the World Taekwondo event. World Taekwondo and European Taekwondo Union will not organize or organize Taekwondo events in Russia and Belarus. Making a U-turn, FIFA has suspended all Russian teams from participating in all international events, including the World Cup, later this year. UEFA, the governing body of the European football, has followed suit banning Russian representations in clubs and international competitions. UEFA has served ties with Russian state energy giants Gazprom, one of the main sponsors as well. The decisions came hours after FIFA has allowed Russian to participate in the 2022 World Cup playoffs or any competition for that matter under the name Football Union Russian RFU. World Rugby on Tuesday reiterated its condemnation of Russia's military operations in Ukraine and the felicitation of action by Belarus. This World Rugby Executive Committee has decided to take immediate action steps to protect the rugby family and take a strong stand against the conflict in line with recommendations by the International Olympic Committee and the full and immediate suspension of Russia and Belarus from all international rugby and cross-border clubs rugby activities until further notice. The decision has been taken with the interest of rugby's values of solidarity, integrity, respect at heart. World Rugby also remains in contact with colleagues at the Ukrainian Rugby Federation and has pledged its full support to the rugby community in their country. Russia on Monday banned airlines from 36 nations from its airspace in retaliation to Ukraine-related sanctions against the country following its military offensive in the Ukraine. The 36 countries included 27 members of the European Union. Notably, flight bans are expected to hurt airlines that fly over the world's biggest country to get from Europe to Asia. They are likely to force them to find a new route. Furthermore, the Russian government agency responsible for overseeing the civil aviation industry in Russia said that the flights of those countries could inexpectionally circumstances be authorized if they secure special clearance from Russia's aviation authority or foreign ministry. It is to be mentioned that the listed countries are banned are Albania, Angulia, Australia, Belgium, Bulgaria, British Virgin Islands, Germany, Gibraltar, Hungary, Greece, Denmark, Canada, Croatia, Crefus, Crete Republic, Estonia, Finland, France, Jersey Island, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain and Sweden and the United Kingdom. India and Pakistan are set to hold the annual meeting of the Permanent Indus Commission PIC in Islamabad from Tuesday. The Indian delegations of the Indus Water Commission reached Pakistan via Waha border crossing on Monday. The three-day talk on water dispute will be held from March 1 to March 3. The Indian delegation is headed by Indian Water Commissioner 
Pradeep Kumar Saxena. According to provisions of the Indus Water Treaty signed between India and Pakistan in 1960, the two commissioners are required to meet at least once every year, alternatively in India and Pakistan. The meeting could be held in 2022 with due to restrictions imposed on the account of COVID-19 pandemic situation. However, discussion continued last year on designs of the two Indian projects, namely Palag Dual 1000 megawatts and Lower Kalnai 48 megawatts. Thank you for tuning in. For more updates, keep watching Nagaland TV.